This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. Let's listen to some testimony here. It's Sergeant Bucknick uh, describing John O'Keefe's injuries and talking about the abrasions that were found on his, uh, his clothing. Now, in addition to the injuries that you observed to Mr. O'Keefe's face, uh, what, if any, injuries did you observe to his extremities? His extremities uh, produced um, abrasions to his upper forearm and lower bicep uh, area on his right arm. And just as you use that term, I'm not asking for any sort of medical definition, but as far as you use that term abrasions, what do you understand that term to be? I understand that term to be a injury sustained through blood force trauma or friction to the epidermis of the skin where a crushing of the vascular system occurs and produces that type of uh, uh, sign on the skin. And from your observation of the injuries to Mr. O'Keefe's arm, uh, which, which arm was this again? It was his right arm. And as far as your observation of those injuries to his right arm, what if any... Um, As far as the consistency of those injuries, what, if anything, did you note or observe in reference to those? Objection. Consistency with what? With the... Let me, let me rephrase this. Yes. Yeah. How were the abrasions that you're describing positioned in relation to each other? Each abrasion appeared to me to be linear and concentrated in a specific um, location on the arm. It didn't go any further north of a, a point and did not go any further south of a point. So it was concentrated in the elbow, a few inches below the elbow, a few inches above the elbow on the right arm. So I'm going to ask you before I make my commentary, what, what do you, what's your take on that sort of an injury right there? Something hit him. Yeah. I, I literally, and again, I, I go, I, I know I keep harping on this. So, Something hit him. Could have been a vehicle. Could have been falling down. Could have been stairs. Could have been. I, cause I'm not a. I'm not a forensic. You know, um, injury guy. Yeah. But but could have been a vehicle. Could have been her vehicle. Could have been someone else's vehicle. Again, it, when you have yeah. the type of injury, when you have the type of evening that they had, a lot of things could have happened. Yes, I mean, it, does it sound like it could be injuries from a fight? I think we'd have to see pictures of it. Yeah. You know, from, from going, I mean, descriptions of it. Um, I, so here's the other thing too, just because, so you we're getting a package of the inju- injuries being described. It doesn't mean that all those injuries happened at the same time. Yeah. True. There could have been a fight at one point. They could have fallen downstairs. Another point could have been hit by a car at another point. I mean, there, there, you it don't could have know, been everything. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, don't know when any of these happened because again, What's the underlying thing here? Drugs. No one has an accurate memory. Yep. Yeah. You know, and so, I mean, how many, how many, how many, I mean, just for everyone listening, how many people have actually been someplace where people have overindulged and dumb things happen, people fall down, stumble throughout the evening from doing things. I mean, mm-hmm. you, we just, so th- what they're trying to do is, you know, in this one clip is package them all together, but we don't know if they're all happened at the same time or not. Sure. I mean, there's no way to tell that unless you actually had eyewitness, eyewitness evidence, but there was none. So you're trying to match up vehicle damage, potential vehicle damage with the injuries there. And they might not completely overlay, even though it might be, but other injuries might have happened throughout the same evening. We yeah. don't know. It's it's trying to put a, a puzzle together when you have broken pieces of the puzzle. <laughs> You can't quite, and, and should this fit together? Should it not? I don't know. You know, it's a great analogy, Tony. You know, it's trying to put a, a puzzle together from the pieces you have, but you don't have the picture of knowing what you're trying to build. True. Yeah, I, I, I think that's just where it's sitting right now. It's certainly a fascinating trial no matter what, but uh, I, I don't know. I don't know that anyone's going to be able to prove anything other than just a lot of bad behavior. Yeah, and, and, and I think that's a key point there. You know, and, when, when you look at things like this, just because evidence presents itself 
from defense or prosecution as a package. This is what objective people do. You just don't say, well, okay, it all happened at the same time. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean, because because we don't know the data on that. I mean, that's the first thing that struck me. It's like, how do we know all that happened at the same time? They're saying it did, but they're assuming it did, but. And and see, and there lies a reason, more reasonable doubt, as to if it doesn't make sense, if you can't understand it, it means we don't have all the data to, to, to put mm-hmm. it together. So there's lots of missing pieces here. Lots. Want to listen ad-free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.